heading out to our new base camp location for the night. The only time I've ever gone winter camping. It was the most miserable night of our lives. I've heard from several people that this shelter can work in um, even negative 40 weather. It's our first time attempting this type of fire. I don't have high hopes for making it through the night. I wanted to test the theory that if you only have a wool blanket, that it's good enough. So I'm breaking all of my own rules. I don't know if you can see the moon up there. There's a lot of places that tonight could go wrong. We're gonna learn a lot. been taught a lot in theory about what's supposed to work and what's not. Honestly, haven't actually ever had the privilege of testing it out. Um, the only time I've ever gone winter camping, uh, we were in a tent and we didn't know what we were doing at all and we had all the wrong gear and it was the most miserable <laughs> night of our lives. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> never slept in one of these overnight in the bitter cold of winter. It was negative 20 below. It was also the first time we tried um, putting a wool blanket on the back of it. And the other thing I was testing for the first time ever um, was the Siberian log fire. So yeah, I'm, I'm pretty excited to finally get to test this shelter out. I've heard people say that they were warm enough with a good fire in front of them. Um, that they basically didn't even need blankets. And so and so that's what I'm gonna be testing. I can't guarantee it's gonna work. The Siberian log fire, it's a new type of fire for me. And so my practice Siberian log fire was in the middle of the night. Yeah, this log fire is not going all that great. <laughs> I knew the snow would melt underneath. I did not have time or anything to uh, dig out all the way down to the ground. And now it makes a lot of sense to me <laughs> that if you're starting a fire in one spot and trying to spread it, then obviously that spot is going to um, sink quite a bit quicker than the, than the rest. After a while of fiddling and trying to figure it out and realizing that I had gotten too much of one thing and not enough of another thing and I tried to save time in the beginning by taking a shortcut here which ended up costing me more time. Uh, our first night we you know, we did quite a few things right, and that was great, but we also did quite a few things wrong or could have been done better. It was really, really cold because I never got the fire going well enough. Anyway, Yuki is, I think, ready for bed, but until we get the fire really going, it's uh, not going to be quite possible. So he can sleep, but I'm going to have to keep working on it. I had really underestimated the amount of... Um, smaller wood I would need to get to get a decent bed of coals going on the logs. So the next night, instead of starting it at 10 o'clock at night, I started at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. The fire is finally going well enough that my phone's not freezing. That makes me a little bit more confident that we might be able to last a little bit longer, a little bit more comfortably tonight. It's a Siberian log fire, and it's designed specifically to um, hold a coal for a really long time and throw the heat in your direction. Uh, and you shouldn't have to fiddle with it uh, more than every few hours. Um, so it seems like a really great thing, but we've never tried it before. And I always tell kids that we work with that you should try something, you know, you gotta practice, practice, practice before you ever have to rely on it, right? So I'm breaking all of my own rules. There's this feeling of like, oh, I gotta push myself past what I think I can be capable of. And when it comes to um, your safety, you don't wanna play around with that kind of thing. The moment your ego and your pride gets involved, uh, you're gonna make stupid decisions. Okay, so it's about four hours later. I wish you could see the stars. Maybe, just maybe you can. One of my favorite things about hanging out in the forest at night is looking at all the shadows on the ground. What tonight has taught me is that the Siberian log fire really does work. Um, however, bigger logs would be lovely. 
through these really, really big logs and ended up giving myself some really bad blisters and I couldn't continue. So I spent all that time all that energy on logs that I ended up not even being able to use. And so I still had to go with the smaller logs that, that I had harvested the night before. So yeah, I do, I do really like the Siberian log fire. It's actually a really cool fire. But yeah, for now we're gonna just try to get comfortable, try to get the fire going again. And, um, and yeah, we're gonna head into our wool blankets. So I'm using three wool blankets here, two relatively thick and one extremely thick, and the extremely thick one is gonna be around my feet. Yuki, um, he might be too young for this, I don't know yet. I didn't really realize how much time would be spent just trying to get him to lay down with me and stop going out to play in the moonlight. He over here is having lots of fun with sticks. If I have to fight with the fire for uh, too much longer in order to get it going again, then we'll just go inside. There's no point in being stubborn and, you know, risking lost toes or a lost puppy. Second night, it worked out pretty well. The logs were a little bit short and not thick enough. Um, but they did burn pretty good and hot for about eight hours, which is pretty great, but I started it too early in the day, so, um, so they definitely weren't going to last overnight. Since it only burns in the front right there, the log underneath, running straight through there, definitely blocked the heat enough that the heat melted the snow in a big area out front. It was definitely throwing the, the heat that way towards the shelter. The whole reason it's supposed to work is it's supposed to help um, reflect heat back down onto you. Our, our winter camping experiments out here didn't go quite as we expected. I was going to be awake all night making sure that the fire and the puppy were okay. I didn't choose to go back because I was too cold. Um, and that's a big win because the first night, definitely too cold. <laughs> Just by the very fact that the second night went so much better than the first. I don't really care that both of us had to go inside in the middle of the night both nights because I find that there's a lot more you can learn from failure than just watching people succeed.